Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, the 9th of January, 2019, and we're back with another Exorcism Elixir Challenge. First of all, I just want to give a shout out to everyone that's been tuning into the video over the past couple of days. Special shout out to the Kajini family that's been giving me a lot of really great feedback and shout outs. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Let's jump straight into it. We have another Exorcism Elixir Challenge today. Today's challenge is the beer song problem. So let's jump over to the beer song. I've already downloaded it and prepared it in VS Code. Let's jump over, look at the readme and solve the problem. So here we are, beer song. Recite the lyrics to that beloved classic, that field trip favorite, 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Note that not all verses are identical. So in the readme here, we've got it printing all of the lines to the 99 bottles of beer on the wall song, 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around, 98 bottles of beer on the wall. And we go down all the way to two bottles, one bottle, and no more bottles of beer on the wall. We've got the bonus point section here, which I'm just going to avoid. I'm trying to make these videos quicker and more punchy. And we have the tests. So the one thing that I wanna point out here is that all of the lines, if I look at them closely, all of the lines follow the same formula. 35 bottles of beer on the wall, 35 bottles of beer, 34 bottles of beer on the wall, all the way up until two bottles of beer on the wall. So I can see that the difference here, the first line is the same. So if we look at the, the previous one, three bottles of beer on the wall, three bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, two bottles of beer on the wall. The difference here is that we go from two bottles of beer to one bottle. So there's no S there. I also notice that the one bottle of beer, we have no plural on the first line. And the second part of this is no more bottles of beer on the wall rather than one bottle or two bottles of beer on the wall. The final verse is totally different. So as always, let's just pull the tests in, make sure that those are running fine, run the tests, and we have all of our failing tests. That's because we haven't implemented anything. We have to implement our beer song module and then run the tests against that. So if we take a look at the tests, the first test that we've got is beer song .verse 99, 98. Okay, then it's testing one, zero, Okay, and then we have another function, beersong.lyrics, where we can pass in a range and it will give us a range of the lyrics. And then finally, I think we have the full, the full lyrics. So if we pass lyrics, no arguments, we should be printing the full lyrics with one new line in between them. So let's start implementing. Um, let's have a look here. We've got our verse function and our lyrics function. Since the verse function is getting tested first, let's start there. And since we're just testing 99 and 98 first, let's just implement the general case where we simply have X bottles of beer on the wall, X bottles of beer, and then X minus one bottles of beer on the wall. I'm literally just going to copy this and paste it in here just as a quick way. So the first thing that I'd like to point out is the way that they have shown this in the test is with three quotation marks. So this is like a here doc in Elixir and it basically allows you to have pre-formatted text. So if I was to say hello and then world and if we then jump back into here, let's pull the code into IEX and we'll run that, all right, beersong.verse and then we'll just do one we can see that it's printed that. If we do io.inspect, it's also the same. Uh, I think it might be io.puts is what I'm looking for. We can see that it's actually printed that formatting, right? So that's all the here doc does is it allows us to pre-format with spaces all of our text. So now that I jump back into here, let me just copy, copy this over. And this will actually cause our first test to pass, if I remember correctly. Let's jump back out, run the first test. And yes, we have our first test passing and that's because this one just requires our 99 bottles of beer. We've literally just copied the output there and put it in. This really isn't a nice way to do it, but we can also get that from the readme. We could just copy that first line. It's the next line where things start to get interesting. Where we have 98 bottles of beer on the wall. So. I think that the best way to do this is if we start using uh, string interpolation. So in Elixir, this is going to be the same as if we have a string like this, we can print out number like that. 
inside the string, and that will pre print the string representation of the number. So if I remove that, what we want to do here is we'd like to replace 99 with the number that we're passing in to the function. Okay, so I'm just going to do the, the hash and then the open curly braces, put a number in there, and then what we have here is the 99. If we jump to the tests, we uncomment the next one, we run the tests, we can see that we're not passing the tests and that's because we've, we've got the correct number in that first line, 98 bottles of beer, but in the second line, we still just have 98 bottles of beer, right? And what we want is 97 bottles of beer. So what we can do inside that string interpolation is that we can also do any sort of elixir function that we'd like. So in here, what do we want? We don't want number, we want number minus one. So all I'm gonna do is number minus one, rerun the tests, and we can see that that test is actually passing, right? And that's because when we pass in 98, it's going to say 98 bottles of beer on the wall, 98 bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, 98 minus one, 97 bottles of beer on the wall. We'll run back into the test. Let's take a look at the next test. So the next test is already getting into those three verses that we noticed in the readme that are different to the other ones. And this is where we really start to get into some interesting features of Elixir. So essentially we have the same function mostly, but these three verses are different. And there are a number of different ways that we can implement that. And I'd like to run through both of them with you and we can decide which one we prefer as we go. So one way to do that is to put a case statement inside this verse, right? So we have four cases. We have the case, our general case, where we just have a number that is greater than two, right? We have a number where it's greater than two, three, four, five, etc., up to 99. And then we have three more cases. We have the case of two, the case of one, and the case of zero. So what we can do in a case is we can use our case statement and we'll do a case on the number. And we can just have the general case of number. And so this will still pass. And actually, let's just make that the default case. We'll put that in there, format the code, run our tests again, just to prove that it's working. Excellent, our two tests that we had passing before are still passing. And that's just because we've done a general case. So no, no matter what number is, it's just going to call this one. So now what we can do above that is actually implement our other cases. So we have a case of one, and actually let's do it in number order. We have a case of zero, we have a case of one, and we have a case of two. So what case does is whatever you've got in here as your argument to the case, you can match on what it is. So this underscore means match anything, and then these other ones specifically mean if number is zero, if number is one, number is two. We could do this with a conditional and use our double equal operator, but I think that this is a whole lot more clean. So if we go back to the readme, let's have a look at what the case of zero bottles is. So we have no more bottles of beer on the wall, no more bottles of beer, go to the store and buy some more 99 bottles of beer on the wall. So let's put that in here. And so we're going to use the same format there with our formatting. Let's do the same for one. What I'll do is I'll just copy that so we can get our two in there. Nice, let's go to one. Let's copy that, put that inside. Tab it all up nicely. Let's get our two, put that in as well. Tab it up, format the code. And there we have our edge cases. So we have zero, one, and two handled, and then we have our final case handled. If we run the tests now, everything should still be passing because we're only testing 99 and 98, and that shouldn't match any of these cases. So let's run the tests again. Easy, so we've passed all those tests still. Let's go to the beer song test, and we'll comment this tag pending to see if we pass the beer song.verse of one. And before we do that, let me jump into IEX. Let me reload the code and then we can run our beersong.verse1 and see what comes out and see if we're actually matching the correct case. One bottle of beer on the wall, one bottle of beer, take it down, pass it around, no more bottles of beer on the wall. That is great because that's exactly what we've got there. Let's test it with zero. 
No more bottles of beer on the wall. No more bottles of beer. Go to the store and buy some more 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Great, that's matching two. Let's do our case of two. Two bottles of beer on the wall, two bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around. One bottle of beer on the wall, and that's correct. Okay, so let me just show you what happens if we comment this out, reload the code, and then run it on two again. It looks about the same, but you'll notice that there's one major difference. We've got two bottles of beer on the wall, two bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, one bottles of beer on the wall. And the reason that it's printing that is because since we removed our case of two, it's gonna check for a match of zero, that's gonna be false, it's gonna check for a match of one, that's also false. And because we don't have a two anymore, it's gonna skip that and go straight to our general case where we have number, number, number minus one, but we also have the plural in there. If we put that back, jump back into our code, reload it, run two again, great, one bottle of beer. So this should now pass those tests where we have our edge cases. Let's jump out of IEX, rerun the tests, and now we have three tests passing. Excellent, let's take a look at the next test. Getting just the last verse, that should still be fine as well. Let's comment that tag pending out, run the test, and that's also passing because we've implemented it there in the last verse, that case of zero. And let's have a look at the next test to see what we're doing. Getting the last four verses. Okay, so now this is using a new function in there, beersong.lyrics. We've previously been using beersong.verse. Beersong.lyrics expects a range as an argument, and we'll jump back over here a range as an argument and it will return a string. And if we see here in the test, what it should be returning is, so we have three to zero and that's inclusive. So we start with three and end on the zero line. Three bottles of beer, two bottles of beer, one bottle of beer, no more bottles of beer on the wall. So we want all of those inclusive lyrics and we want them separated by one new line in there. So let's start looking at the implementation and how we might do that. So we already have a function to, given a particular number, to give us that verse, right? So if we just had our range, uh, if we just took the first number, we would be able to get the verse for it. In here, because we're basically building up a string of a large number, I suggest that we use enum.reduce. So what enum.reduce is, is going to do is iterate over the range and it's going to build up an accumulator. So the second argument to reduce is going to be the accumulator. So here we just have an empty string. We're gonna start with an empty string because if the range doesn't exist, we're just gonna return an empty string. But the next part of the function is what actually is going to build up. So what we're going to do is pass in every number in the range. So if we've passed in three dot dot zero, this function is going to receive a number and that number is going to be three, two, one, and zero and it's also going to pass in the accumulator, which we can modify. So now that we have that, what we need to do is add to the accumulator. So we're going to add to the accumulator. In Elixir, if you want to concatenate a string, we're going to use the, what is this, less than and then greater than symbol. And what we'll do is we'll put in the verse function and the number that we've got in there. And so what this should be doing is adding the verse to the accumulator for each number. So this is going to go, first it's gonna get three, then it's going to get two, then it's going to get one, and finally it's going to get zero. And for each one, it's gonna get the verse and it's gonna concatenate it to the string that was previously in there. So let's jump into IEX and have a look at how this actually works. We'll load the file and we'll do beersong.lyrics and we'll pass in the same range that the test has. So we'll do 3.0. And we can see here that this isn't printing very nicely. I'm gonna pipe that into io.puts so we can actually see what it's like formatted. We've got three bottles of beer on the wall, three bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, two, two, one, and no more bottles of beer. If we look at the test, we're pretty close. So we've added all of the lines in there, but one thing that I notice that's missing is the fact that we don't have this new line in between the, uh, the verses there. That's a simple fix. All we need to do is after we concatenate the verse, let's just add a new line. So I'm just gonna do another concatenation operator and I'm gonna put in a new line character. Let's jump down into IEX, reload the code and we'll run that function again. And we can see here that this is looking good to me. So we've got, a, we've got our verse in there, we've got the correct verse and we have a new line between them. 
I'm gonna quit out of that. I'm gonna run the tests and we'll see if we pass. Okay, so we actually haven't commented that. So we're not running the test. We still excluded it. Run that test. Okay, and we're failing. And I can see here that this one is highlighted in red, which means that we have one extra new line versus what the test is expecting. So the reason that that is happening, if we jump back into IEX, I can see why that's happening. We'll reload the code and we'll print that out. We can see that we have an extra new line at the end. So looking in here, we have a new line between each one, but the last line doesn't have a new line at the end. So we could do something pretty complex here with uh, enum dot with index and check the indexes. And if it's the last index, don't put that backslash n, that new line character at the end. But I think the easiest way to actually just remove that, because really we're just removing one final character of the string. If we look at our test output, it's literally just that last character. So if we were able to just get the string that we get out of enum.reduce and just chop off the last character, we'll be exactly where we need to be. And there's a, an easy way to do that, and that's with string.slice. And so what we're going to do is pass in a range uh, in the slice and the range will be zero. So we're gonna start at the first character and we're going to do all of the characters up until the second last character. So if we were to do zero to minus one, that would do the whole string from start to finish. So let's actually, I'll show you an IEX. Reload the code, we'll run that. We get the same exact one. If we jump in and we change this to minus two, that should chop off that last new line character. Let me save that, we'll jump down, reload the code, run it again. And you can see here, that this one is actually one new, new line less. So we have one new line between the okay and the last line, whereas previously we had two new lines in between there. So all this is doing is literally just chopping off that final new line, and I think that's the easiest way to do it. And we should now be passing the test. I'm just gonna format the code, jump back in, quit out of IEX, run the tests again, and you can see there that it's passing. Everything is passing, and that's because we're outputting the correct amount, and the final, test that we've got here is getting the whole song. So I can see here that it's calling beer song dot lyrics with no arguments. And if we if we were to comment this out, this pending, and we run the tests, well actually we should get an error saying that yes, so beer song dot lyrics, and this notation here means lyrics with no arguments. So with an arity of zero is undefined or private. And if we look over at our beer song module, that's because our lyrics expects one argument, right? It expects a range and it will return a string. If there are no arguments, as here, where we've got it implied as zero, here with no arguments, we actually don't have a clause that is handling that. So one way that we could do that is to define a new clause and we'll call this lyrics and have no arguments in there. And what we'll do is we will call the lyrics function with one argument, but we'll do a range of 99 to zero because that's what the test implies that it expects. So it expects 99, and I assume it goes all the way to zero. Yep, so all the way to zero. So with no arguments, what we wanna do is print lyrics 99 to zero. If we run the test now, that should pass. Nice, so that passed, but there's a much cleaner way to do that, and we can do that with default arguments in Elixir. So in Elixir, we can pass in a default value for the range if no value is passed in. So if we call this with zero, all we need to do is two backslashes and we'll pass in the default range of 99 to zero. So what that means is if range isn't passed in, if there's no value for range, assume it's 99 to zero. And internally, what Elixir will do is actually what we've just done here. It will just create another clause without showing you where there are zero arguments and it will just be calling the function again with that default argument. So it's just a cleaner way to do exactly what we did there. Let's run the tests again and they should all be passing. Beautiful, so that's all passing. We have our default argument there for the range and we've got our enum.reduce and our string.slice and that's it. That's a very clean way that we could do this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there is another way, instead of using the case on the number, there is another way that we can do that and I'll just quickly run through the way that we'll do that just in case you're curious about Elixir or another way to do it. The way that we would do that is actually in the function clause itself. So what we can do is we can define a verse function specifically on a zero argument, right? And this is called function overloading. Since we have verse here that accepts a number 
and verse here that accepts a single number as well, but we're telling it that we only want this function clause to run when the argument is exactly zero. And so what we can do here is we can cut that out, paste that in there, get the tabbing correct. And then for our number one, we'll do the same thing. We'll define a new verse and what I'll do is I'll just copy, I'll paste this twice because we're gonna have two as well. So we'll do verse with one and then verse with two. And what we'll do is we'll extract these and paste them in. So now we've overloaded the function once, twice, three, four times. Verse of two, we'll take that out. Paste that in. Okay, and in this case, we don't actually need our case statement at all. Since we've handled those edge cases in the previous one, we know in the same way that Elixir goes through all of the different cases to determine which one to choose, it's going to do the same thing with the functions. So this is just a nice way to denest, right? So if you have like a nested case statement or a nested if statement and you wanna remove one level of nesting, one way to do it would be to actually match on the argument to the function. So here, instead of a case statement, Elixir is gonna check if our integer, our number argument is zero. If it's zero, it's going to use this version of the function. If it's one, then it's gonna use this version of the function. If it's two, then this version of the function. Otherwise, in all other cases, for any other value of number, because we haven't put any other requirements on here, it's going to call this version. All right, and we can jump into IEX and I can prove it to you. We'll reload the thing, beer song, and we'll do dot verse. We'll start with zero. No bottles of beer on the wall. You can see that it's calling that one. Let's try it with one. One bottle of beer on the wall, one bottle of beer, take it down, no more bottles of beer on the wall. Excellent. Call it with two, two bottles of beer. And the one that we're looking at is this last line. We have one bottle of beer on the wall there. And again, just as I did before, I can prove how it's working through those functions by commenting that out, jumping in, reloading the code, and then calling that one again. It looks the same apart from that one character. Two bottles of beer on the wall, two bottles of beer, take it down, take one down, pass it around, one bottles of beer on the wall. There's an S there where there shouldn't be an S. If we uncomment that function again, jump back in, reload the code, run it again, we should see one bottle, right? Because Elixir's working down the list of functions, finding the first one that matches, choosing it. If we jump down here and put in three, we should get three bottles of beer on the wall, three bottles of beer, pass it down, two bottles of beer on the wall. And if we call it with four, etc. right? So now every time that we call it with a number higher than two, it's just going to use our default number. So we've changed it from a case into an overloaded function. You can tell me which one you prefer. I, I don't really mind. I think both were pretty reasonable. Uh, usually I would decide on a case if it's very short and I can express it within, I don't know, 10 or so lines. That's a nice way to do it. If I have uh, really big nested parts of the case statement, so let's say on zero we had like 10 lines of code and on one we had 10 lines of code, and on each one, it was just a really big one. I would prefer to put them into specific functions and denest the case statement just so it's more readable. Okay, and let me just run the tests again to make sure that my change hasn't messed anything up. Cool, all our tests are still passing. There are no warnings in this code. I'm just gonna go in here and control option L to format the code. And I think we're done. Awesome, so that's, the end of that problem, I'm going to submit it to Exorcism and you'll be able to see my published solution a little bit later. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.